you, <laughs> you don't need any introduction. Uh, your name is uh, a brand. It's already okay. a brand. It's a I brand mean, uh, for, yeah, for, for innovation, a... for ambition, for... A perfume? Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. This is uh, the agreement that you uh, made with yeah. uh, the Arno family a few hours yeah. ago. I mean, it's. It, I mean, really, it brands itself. Yeah. <laughs> and you are the origin of PayPal, Tesla, SpaceX, to name a few, and even OpenAI. So. Yeah. You love taking risks and um, you are going always against the tide and uh, the popular wisdom, you have been always proven right. Now there is al almost. <laughs> Not always. Almost. <laughs> most, uh, yes. Now there is a bet of uh, the 44 billion US dollar question, which is, will you still be right with Twitter? Sure. Uh, uh, so it was expensive. Yeah, yeah you agree. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if um, you know. If, if, listen, if I'm so smart, why did I pay so much for Twitter then? <laughs> <laughs> so, as I'm not a journalist, I'm not trying to get headlines and to have provocative uh, uh, response and to, to make a scoop. But nevertheless, if you wish to do that, it is authorized. Okay, great. So we are expecting that you will uh, really make the show because everyone comes here to see you, to listen to you, and to uh, get uh, some of the magic that you have. All right. Well, but, I'm, 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 I'm honored that you all want to listen to what I have to say. It's uh, great to, to see the crowd and... Uh, I don't know, you guys seem awesome, so. <laughs> but you told me that you would like, you said that you would like to speak in French. <laughs> oh my goodness. Zut <laughs> alors. <laughs> Bonjour Paris. Bonjour Paris. So, there are some people who believe that you are a genius. And there, there are some who are, you will believe that you are evil. So, well, we, I mean, you can be both. You, we, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could be an evil genius. That's yeah. not, uh, you know. So you will tell us what you are, or you will let the people uh, <laughs> draw their own conclusion. Um, uh, I am um, definitely not evil. <laughs> <laughs> tell me. <laughs> What? <laughs> what, what is the thing that you have ahead of your... Uh, yes, if you, if you look carefully, you can see an angel's halo on my head <laughs> and the wings. Uh, it's uh, subtle, uh, but... Uh, where are yeah. the wings? Yeah, they're, so, they're difficult to see, but if you look carefully, you know, they're right there. Yeah, yeah um, small wings. Yes. Um, so, yeah, hopefully not evil. Aspirationally not evil. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so that wasn't uh, convincing. <laughs> Elon, you, you have done a lot of operation. You have created a lot of companies. The most important question for everyone is: What the hell is driving you? Why are you so obsessed by new operation, new creation, new things to do? Yeah, it, uh, crystal meth is the answer. Um, <laughs> If you think Red Bull gives you wings, um, so <laughs> man, that that that's, that that quote's gonna probably sting. Um, so um, yeah, just kidding for the record. <laughs> <laughs> um, so well, I think there's it, it, the companies still have a lot to do for their their core mission. Um, the you know for electric vehicles, sustainable energy. Uh, still less than 1% of the global fleet is electric. So you've got about 2 billion cars and trucks on the road, but still uh, less than uh, 20 million are electric at this point. So there's still a long way to go for sustainable energy, for um, 
sustainable energy generation. So this, you know, the Tesla mission, I think we've, we've made a, a lot of progress, but still um, it's a lot, a lot more ahead. Um, then SpaceX, the goal is, uh, it's, a, it's a big goal, but it's, we, we want to try to uh, make life multi-planetary, to extend life beyond Earth. And um, I think this is important for a number of reasons, uh, but um, yeah, there's, there's the sort of defensive reason of ensuring that the light of consciousness does not go out. Um, and, and if I, I may, some of these questions, I, if, if I'm going on too long, you feel free to interrupt me, but the... No, no, you can. Okay. You can so, be long. Okay, so, um, you know, pe people do ask me, you know, uh, have I seen UFOs uh, and aliens and that kind of thing? And um, I haven't. Um, and I think I would have seen them by now. Um, so it, it appears that we might, there's, we might be the only consciousness, uh, at least in this galaxy. And, um, and if so, that's kind of a scary prospect because uh, it, it means that the light of consciousness is like a, like a tiny candle in a vast darkness. And uh, we should do everything we can to prevent that candle from going out. So, yeah. And, and, and so, so some of the things, so that means obviously taking the actions to ensure that Earth is good, that Earth is safe and secure for civilization. Um, and it, I think it also means ex, ex, extending life beyond Earth um, to other planets in the solar system and ultimately to other star systems. Um, and I think that's, that's both a sort of defense of the light of consciousness and also um, I think a point of inspiration because the, the, life cannot just be about solving um, one problem after another. We need things that inspire us. I mean, we need things that you know, move our heart and that when you wake up in the morning, you're excited to be alive. And being a space-bearing civilization and making true the things that we see in the good science fiction movies this is one of the things that I think can inspire all of humanity. Just like the, you know, when, when the um, astronauts went to the moon in 69, it was something that, I mean, they said for all mankind, you know, and it really was something you say to any human on Earth, what's, the, what is, what's like the most amazing thing that humanity has ever done? A lot of, at least one of those things would be, we went to the moon, you know, and so you want to have these inspiring things that make you excited to be alive and excited about the future. Um, yeah. And you, you had those uh, thoughts and dreams uh, when you were a kid or this came uh, much later on? Well, I didn't think I would be doing these things as a kid, um, that's for sure. I was interested in technology and I was read a lot of books. Um, so I was obviously interested in science. I mean, this is, not, this is hardly going to be surprising. I was interested in science fiction and technology. You have to tell the truth because there is someone <laughs> yeah. who is listening to you, huh? Yeah, my mom's right there. She can, <laughs> she can call me out on this if it's not, not accurate. But um, so I, I guess the, the thing that was maybe um, most significant from a philosophical standpoint was that uh, when I was about maybe 12 or 13, I had somewhat of an existential crisis where I was like, I was like what, what is the meaning of life? Is life just meaningless? Why are we here? What does it all mean? And, um, and I read a lot of books on religion and philosophy and, um, and then ultimately, the, you know, I read this book, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is great. Um, and, and in that book, that book is really a, a, a philosophy book that's disguised as humor. And the point that Douglas Adams makes is that the, the real difficulty is understanding what questions to ask about the answer that is the universe. Um, and that, we, we, that, that really we want to, we want to have, it's, it's, it's essentially, a, it's, it's like a philosophy of curiosity. Um, of, of saying, well, what can we do to find out more about the, the nature of the universe and, um, and the meaning of life? And so 
that's, that's the sort of foundational element. And then from there you say, okay, well, if we want to find out the meaning of life, we have to expand the scope and scale of consciousness. We have to go out there and we ex explore the stars to, to know what questions to ask um, about the universe and, and understand the universe. And that's, 